Ready for some Blender magic? So this video is actually a sample lesson from our upcoming Blender animation course to animate. Now this is a complete lesson, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging, don't worry. Um, but again, this is one of hundred, over a hundred different lessons that's in the actual course. You know, plus the rigs, the assets, the sets, the voice acting, the forum support, the assignments. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a taste and just to show you guys what the teaching style will be in the actual course. So I hope you enjoy. Without further ado, let's hop in. Hey guys, so as promised, we're going to cover the many uses of the 3D cursor. Now, first of all, what is the 3D cursor? The 3D cursor is this little circle right here in the center. It's at the center of the Y, the X, and the Z axes. And the first use of this 3D cursor is to actually spawn things. So right now it's telling the file that whatever you want to bring in, it's going to come out right here where the circle is, which is right in the center. You can leave it here, for example, if you're working on a big shot and just remember where um, the center of your scene is. So for example, if we go to add here and press mesh cube, we just add a cube. You don't have to follow along, I'm just showing you. We have a cube that's found in the very center of our 3D cursor. If we do a sphere, again, right in the center of that cursor. So there are some different ways of moving this 3D cursor. Let's say, for example, you have this big scene and um, let's say you have a lot of stuff happening over here and you want to start spawning things over there where all the action is in your scene. You can hold the shift button and press right click, right mouse click. And this will move your 3D cursor wherever you're clicking. So another way to move the 3D cursor is by pressing T, making sure you have the 3D cursor selected here. And then you can just left click now. Wherever you left click, the cursor will go. Um, for more accuracy, you can come up here and go into the orthographic view and that way you have a little bit more control over where you actually want it to be in space. And let's say I want it to be right here in that center on both sides and then when I come out of this view, it's right there, right above the Y axis line. So the third way to move this cursor is by pressing N and bringing up the view tab right here. You can go all the way down to 3D cursor and you can use the different location attributes and out of the rotation is not really going to do anything but you can use the attributes here to move the cursor around if you like let's try placing our cursor over here and adding a new object and look at that the center of the scene here but our 3d cursor is over there and the cube spawns right on the cursor so the fastest and easiest way to actually get the 3d cursor where you want it to go is by giving it a point of reference now what do I mean by that? So for example, let's press max here. We're in object mode right now, which means we can't touch the controllers. So let's go ahead and change it to pose mode. So let's say I want to bring a sword, for example, into Max's hand. Instead of importing it either down here or importing it over there, we can just press Max's hand or any other controller. Press Shift S and hold S to bring up the Pi menu for the cursor. And now if you come to the bottom, you can select cursor to select it. And now we have the 3D cursor in the very center of that controller. Okay, so let's say we want to bring a sword into the scene for the character. Instead of bringing it in down here and bringing it up and bringing it to the character's hand, or it, worse, if our character is all the way over there somewhere, we have to try and find where the prop actually got brought in. This way, when you have the cursor set to the center of the hand or wherever else you want to bring in, if it's a hat, you can, you know, click on the head, press shift S, cursor selected. Now when you spawn the hat, it will be around the head area. Bring it to the hand, shift S, cursor to select it, let go. So let's go ahead and link this sword in. Link, sword, and here we go. It imported right here where our 3D cursor was. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the controls to this by going to object, relation, make proxy, and then sword rig. And there we go, now we have controllers for the sword. So there are several other uh, menu options such as snapping the cursor to grid, bringing it back to the world origin, and snapping it to the current active object. 
You can also snap the object to the cursor as well, which is super, super helpful. So in this case, we can go selection to cursor once we have the sword selected and boom, the sword goes right to the selection. Okay, so let's say the character is resting their hand on a table or just on any surface and you want to move the hand from the tip of the fingers. Let's say if we want the hand to be going this way from the tip of the fingers or from any other point in space aside from here. Usually most rigs won't allow you to do that because that's not really possible. You can't really start rotating stuff from anywhere in space. So in this case, if you want the hand to start rotating from the fingers where the hand moves, but the fingers stay still, like this becomes the point of origin for the rotation. We can go ahead and bring the 3D cursor here by selecting this button, let's say, Shift S, cursor to select it. Now I'm going to press the cursor button over here and Let's make sure we're in this view so it's as accurate as we can be. Now let's go to this view, make sure it's in the center of the finger, cool. I'm going to come all the way up here to transform pivot point and instead of individual origins or whichever one else you guys had selected, I'm going to change this to 3D cursor. And now I'm going to select the ARMS IK controller and when we rotate, the hand starts rotating from R new point of origin or where the 3d cursor is and if you you know you don't want to do that anymore you're done with this part of the animation you can go ahead and change this back into individual origins and you're back to normal so in a nutshell the 3d cursor is used to spawn an object you can snap objects to the desired position you can use it as a temporary pivot for whatever controller from anywhere in space while animating, it's a super cool tool and you'll find yourself using it over and over again once you actually start using it and get the hang of it. Especially when you're setting up your scenes and placing assets, um, as well as animating complex movements that extend beyond the regular capabilities of the rig. So I hope this helped you and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.